All right, so on the main channel, I am already working on a video about tune shaders and things like that, but uh, just to go a little more in depth, I'm making this one also. So just make sure that you have a light in your scene. I'm using 4.0, which means that screencast keys is broken. So you're just gonna have to try to follow along without that, unfortunately. And as always, make sure that you're using Node Wrangler, because I, you know, I will be using that, and pretty much everybody who is working in the shader node editor is gonna be using that. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna get rid of that camera for now and go to the shading tab right here. I'll add in a Suzanne Control 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier right here, and I'll right click and shade smooth. Let's go to render view now over here. And I'm just gonna set the world shader right here to be a little lower, maybe like 0.3, something like that. And the light that you use doesn't really matter too much as long as you can actually see it influencing it right here. I'm also gonna make the background transparent just because I enjoy that more. All right, so uh, let's add a new uh, shader right there, a new material. And uh, don't worry about it looking different in, in 4.0. Um, it's basically the same old uh, principled shader that you know all the uh, options are just you know under these little drop downs now so don't worry about that basically the whole idea or the whole like workflow with tune shaders for the most part is gonna be using the shader to rgb node right here and this only works in eevee so make sure that you're using eevee this doesn't work with cycles and then after this you can do anything you want to basically manipulate this color right here so commonly what you'll see is people use a color ramp like this and then you can just uh, do whatever you want with these values you can turn it to constant and it will immediately look kind of cell shaded where it's like solid colors like that you just have to move these around to get different results. Another thing you might have noticed is that it's a little, it's supposed to be solid, but we do still have some gradation right there. But there are a few things that you can do to try to fix that. So and they're all gonna mostly have to do with your light. So my light right now is an area light. And if I go to the settings right here and just make the size zero, it's going to be a little better. Um, but another thing you can do is just turn off shadow right here. And it's not going to have as realistic like uh, shadows, like, like overhangs that would be casting shadows like right here should be making the eye completely dark. It's not going to do that when this is off, but it will when it's on. But when it's off, it looks much cleaner. So a lot of people like to do that. I'm actually gonna leave it on and I'm just gonna change this to a sun. Let's maybe make the strength five and I'll turn the angle all the way down. The angle is, is like the size of the light basically. So if I turn it up a lot higher, it's gonna get softer like that. So I'll just set it to zero and I'll pull it to the front a little just so we have a little more casting on the face. But yeah, so most of the tune shading things that you'll see in other videos are going to be using this method right here. And you can change these to whatever colors you want. So I'll make it this uh, darker color and then we can push this way over here and maybe make another one in the middle that's a little lighter like this. You turn the saturation down a little bit. So now we have three colors right there. It does, in my opinion, it looks pretty cool also, even when you're not using constant, just when you're like crunching the values a little more. So you can you can get it pretty close and it's just like a little softer like that. I still think that looks cool. So yeah, let's uh, instead of using the color ramp, you can also use a few other nodes. So if you're just going for that hard cell shaded look, you can use a math node and set that to greater than and that will basically be like the color ramp set to constant with only a uh, black and white with you know two colors like that so you can do that also you could even use a few of these and add them together so the way that you would do that i haven't actually experimented with this but it should be pretty easy if you just get a, a mix color right here and just keep using these for the fact. So if we have two of these, you want to make sure that they're both using the um, color like that into the value. And I'll set this one to be a little higher. So let's get two of these. They're both going to be controlling the factor. And then this one will be plugged into the second slot 
of the first one like that. So now we can have three colors. I'll make this one dark like that. Um, and I'll make this last one white. This one would be like whatever uh, middle color we want basically. So we can do another thing. Let's make it blue this time just uh, for some variety. And then this one we'll do like dark blue like that. So this is a way to make like basically uh, if you were to turn this into a group, you would be able to control all the colors from the outside. Whereas with the color ramp, um, you don't have any inputs for the colors. So, you know, we could group this up by selecting it all, hitting control G, and then you could, you know, take the group input, use this for all the colors. You know, if you want, probably makes sense to, to name these instead of A, A, B, you could name them by pressing N or opening up this thing over here. Under group, you could just change this to like color one, two, and three or whatever. If you're planning on reusing it, probably, you know, spend time making it a little cleaner. And then we have uh, these two thresholds. So then from the outside, you have three colors and you can change them all in here, make it look a little nicer like that. There is uh, another way of doing this that gives you a little more control over like, uh, like if you don't want it to be hard edged like that, but you want it to be more like this, you could instead use a map range. And uh, mostly you would just be using the from min and the from max. So normally what I would do is just um, crunch these numbers together. This is basically gonna work just like the color ramp where these uh, values are going to be like the position values right here that you're seeing. So, you know, this one, if we have it set to zero and one, that would be like, like this. But if we set this to like 0.4 and 0.6 like that, that would be the same as 0.4, oh, this one, 0.6. And this one would be 0.4. It's gonna work the same exact way. Let's, let's actually test it out because I'm curious. So this should look exactly the same like that, but you have the added benefit of being able to, you know, control all of these uh, from a group just like this. So just so that we can have one that's, that's like hard edge, I'll do a hard cell shade like that. Actually cell shading is supposed to have one L I believe. You could do the same thing where you have two like this, except you can control how hard or soft they are. Basically what you want to do is just make sure that this first one right here, if you're just going to be looking at the from max, you want that to be the same as the from minimum for the next one. So the way that I like to do this, you could either use three value nodes like this. It would be like the low, the medium and the high. So you would do this into the from minimum, this into the from maximum. And then the next one, they're going to share this value like that. And this is how you would control it. And then you could do the same sort of setup with the mix color right here. So this is going to be controlling the factor of this one. This is going to be controlling the factor of the second one. And then just like before, we're just going to plug it into the second run right here. If you wanted more, you would basically just do the same thing like that. Just plug it into the second one and then you would have four colors, but I'm not going to do that. I think it's a little like this is fine. Well, we can we can just do this one. I'll make this one green. So that one. I'll just copy paste this into each, make this lighter and a little more desaturated. And then this one completely like that. So this one, you have a little less control over like how close you want all the values. So usually instead of setting it up with three values like this, I'll use add, I'll use add nodes. So that's a math node just set to add like this. So you can have basically you could add this in like that, that would control the second one. And this is for the second, uh, for the from minimum value also. And then this, you're adding it again. So you would do it like this. So everything is basically um, relative to the first one. And if you want, you could even use the same value for both of these. So uh, let's just set this to 0.1, just so it's quite a bit closer like that. And then uh, when we push this, you can see all the colors are pretty close. And we can kind of control the sharpness of it, like how big the fall off is with this value right here. So if we make it bigger, you know, it's going to get softer. And if we make it smaller, like 0 0.01, then it's going to look, you know, quite a bit uh, sharper. I think this would probably be better if we just set both of them like this. So then we can have different values and we can actually see, <laughs> you know, the middle value a little more like that, set this to 0 0.01. So maybe the middle value is, is soft like that. 
you can come up some with you can come up with some pretty interesting results this way. Let's save this one and move on to a different one. I can uh, play around with with uh, half tone and screen tone and stuff like that. So this one, I'll just call cell shading. I'll just uh, clear this out, make a new one, and uh, I'll do the same thing where I bring a shader to RGB. So everything is basically going to use that, and we'll bring a math node set to greater than. And this one, I'll just do uh, I'll do screen tone. So it's going to be like little dots, basically showing like the gradation instead of it being a hard line like this. So for that, you're going to want to use the Voronoi texture. That's going to be the easiest one to use. And we can preview this with control shift left click like that. And this is going to give us a bunch of little circles, basically. Uh, if we turn it up, you can see it's a little better looking. And we can turn the randomness um, all the way down like that. So it's more of like a grid of points. If you want it to be more like kind of random stipply looking or a little messy, then you can turn the randomness up and that would look good also. So one of the challenges with creating a good screen tone shader is um, con is figuring out which coordinates to use because right now you can see it's kind of stretched it's going to look kind of different well if we plug the distance in right here to the threshold and look at this we're kind of getting the effect but it it doesn't look very similar to how you would see in like a a, a normal like real comic book uh like screen tone or half tone effect so first of all one of the problems is the white uh, circles. Normally it would be black circles. Obviously, if you just like the look of this, you can leave it that way. But um, I'm going to bring in a mix node right here and plug this into the factor. And basically, instead of zero to one, we want this to be one and zero. And that's just going to flip the values around. Next, I'm going to set this to 2D because we're going to be treating it kind of like a 2D texture. And if we look at it from the top, you can see it's already looking a little better. But the coordinates um, that we're using, I think by default, these are the generated coordinates. If you drag this out, search for coordinate right here, the generated one is the one that it uses by default. So I would recommend using either camera, window, or there's a third one that's in a different node that we can use. I, th I think it's just called camera view or something like that. But basically, one of the main differences between well, let's just talk about camera first, and then I'll talk about window. Camera is going to kind of make it so so that it looks 2D uh, from wherever you're looking. As you can see, uh, it's kind of changing as I'm rotating it. But if you focus on a single dot, it's kind of staying in the same spot, even when you move around like this. But one difference is when you zoom in, it actually gets bigger like that. Window is a little different because it's completely flat. And when you zoom in, it will not get bigger. Like no matter how far you zoom in, the, the texture is gonna stay the same size, but you can see it's kind of stretched out also. That's because it's looking at the shape of the window right here. And if we like push it, you can see it stretches even more. So I don't really like using window. You could make it look good in renders basically by figuring out like the, the ratio that you're rendering in. So this is 16 by nine, but you don't really need to know the actual ratio as long as you know the, like the width and all that you could just i believe you could just uh multiply it so let's see you take a get a vector math node set to multiply let's set this to one and if you look through the camera this is what you're gonna see when you render so this is what you want to be like working working with basically let's see so you'd want this one to be a smaller number so you could do you could do 10 divided by 1920 and then they should be circles like that and not squashed anymore. But there's actually a better option instead of using this one and having to do the math, you can look for the camera data node right here and use the view vector. So this is gonna give us the flatness. It's gonna give us the flatness of the window where when you zoom in, it's the, you know, the texture is not going to change size, but it's going to always be, well, it's not going to stretch and distort based on the shape of the window. So it's kind of like camera mixed with window. I think in a lot of cases, camera actually looks a little better. Like if we, instead of using the Voronoi texture, if we use the wave texture right here, this is gonna give us lines instead. So let's just plug this up into here, turn it up a little more. Oops. Okay, so to get different values, you can also just tweak these values right here. But as you can see with the 
camera data node, the view vector, you can't really tell, like you can't judge depth at all, which is kind of, that. that's like normal. That's what you would actually see in like 2D screen tone for the most part. But if we use the camera one from the texture coordinate, you can actually see it. So if you want it to, if you want it to conform a little more to your object, then you might want to use camera, even though it's not as accurate as like, cl like close to the 2D effect. I think in a lot of cases it looks a little better. So um, we'll just be using that one moving forward, just the camera camera um, coordinate right here. But yeah, the whole idea behind the screen tone, or you know, the half tone or the the lines like that is just doing this right here and then dialing in the values that you want like that. You can also rotate it if you want, like if you want it to not be straight up and down, but maybe 45 degrees, you can either use a um, vector rotate or a mapping node and just plug it in in here. And you would want this to be adjusting the Z rotation. And this already is adjusting the Z rotation like that. Or you can set this to Euler and do it on whatever axis you want right there. So I think this looks pretty good. Let's see. We can also use this to kind of just uh, to adjust existing colors. So basically you would, instead of using this directly in right there, you would be using this to control like a mix shader node or not a mix shader, but a mix RGB. So we can get a mix color in there and we can put this in the factor right there. So it's basically just going to be, well, I guess you could set this up a few different ways, but one way is instead of the factor, putting this in the uh, the second slot and maybe changing this to multiply. So then it's always gonna make, it's always gonna be darker. Wait a sec, what's going on? Oh, you know, <laughs> I forgot, I gotta plug this in and now it should work. Okay, so this is basically just going to be on top of, you know, whatever color you have going on there. So you could just make this whole thing like blue or whatever like that or you could you know mix with the cell shaded look that i did before with like a color ramp like this and then you can uh you know crunch the values and use use whatever colors you want also so we could make this one a little lighter like that and then you know the factor is just going to control like how dark like that so if you just want it completely black then this is what you're looking for and this should work the same with uh, the wave texture right here. Let's just reset this so one is on the bottom. It's not gonna make much of a difference, but but you don't need to invert that one. And this one is probably pretty cool looking when it's diagonal also. Let's make this make this bigger though. And let's mess with these values a little. That, okay. So you can get you know some cool effects like this. There are uh, other ways also of treating this like if you don't want it to be if you don't want these lines to actually taper off and change size but you want them to be kind of like how do I say this well I'll just show you a different way in the screen tone one and I'll, I'll duplicate it so this one's screen tone two so this one is going to be they're all going to be like consistent width but in like different steps kind of like with, when you're using um, a color ramp set to constant so let's just uh, delete these for now and we'll start off with this one so, so basically you want something to uh, snap to values before it goes into the, the greater than. So if you want, you could use this, let's see. Yeah, and so all of these are gonna be the con uh, like a consistent width like that. You can see it just kind of stops right there. And this is going to, let's see, where would it be? Well, this is just gonna be zero and one. So you would actually want this in here before you do this and now th this would be able to um like control where those are being placed but this is only going to give you you know two dot sizes so if you want more than that then that's when you would bring in a color ramp or something like that so let's just use a color ramp plug this into the threshold and set this to constant. And basically you would just be using, not this one, my bad, instead of the greater than, that's what you wanna do. So we could uh, bring in a mix right there. But you don't really need this, I guess, because you can, can, you can change the values in here also. Sorry, I'm kinda all over the place. Okay, so you would basically just add uh, however many steps as you want in here. And you would also wanna flip this just so that we're dealing with um, black black dots again. Okay, so you can change the dot sizes and they're not going to have like smooth transitions in the same way as with the other one. You can see it kind of like, 
has a hard edge right there. And again, this is going to look a little better if we turn shadow off. It's going to be a little more clear, the edges. So yeah, you can experiment with this, experiment with this if that's actually what you want. And this, sorry, this will also work just fine for the wave texture. We can plug this up here also. And just so you can see everything that I have in here, here's what it looks like. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna work the same way as well. Let's see, another way you can do kind of stepped Let's do cell shading and I'll, I'll duplicate this one, cell shading too. So another way that you can do that, let's, I think I deleted the output, material output. Okay, another way you can do this is just with a map range. Um, and I already showed this, but this one's a little different. You can set this to um, stepped linear and that will immediately give you multiple steps, but you don't really have control or as much control as over their spacing. You can't control how far apart or how big each band is. You can only control like the steps right here and you can control. I think basically all of them are going to be evenly spaced apart. So it's a little hard, harder to control them um, individually, but it does look pretty cool right out of the box. You can also change this to vector and that will basically take any colors in here and split those up into R, G, and B like this. You can see we're getting a cool result. It's basically just going to be uh, changing the color of the model right here. Typically, I think it works best when this is just set to white like we have it, because uh, if you have it too dark, then everything's just gonna turn black. So I think having it set to white works pretty well, but just so that I can show you, we can set this maybe to a noise texture and plug the color in here. So this is what it's gonna look like once it actually loads. It's just gonna be colorful like that, but then we put it through here and it's going to split it up into multiple multiple bands like that. And you know, the more steps we give it, the more accurate it's going to get the colors. But if we have it pretty low, then it will be mostly um, RGB right there, which I think looks pretty cool if you're into that sort of thing. If you want, this is just like an alternate way of doing it. You could use a vector math node. Let's see, vector math node set to snap and that's oh, not size snap and that's going to be doing um, the same thing as the map range except you don't have the from minimum and stuff you only have the steps so the way this works is instead of saying how many steps you're saying like how many increments you want so if you wanted two steps that would be one divided by two or or 0.5 yeah so you want four you would do 0.25 like that and it should be the same result, but without any of the other control, which you don't have a whole lot of control over that anyway. So maybe that's better for you. Let's see what else we have. I guess another cool thing that you can do is um, just like a fake outline. It's not a solid width outline like you would get for uh, from freestyle, a freestyle in here, or if you do the inverted hull method, or if you use the, uh, what is it? If you do uh, the grease pencil line art, but I'm gonna show that in the, the main channel video when I make it, I'm not gonna go into all that for this one, so. But anyway, uh, for the outline, this one is, is pretty simple. It's, uh, again, a shader to RGB. You can use math node set to greater than and a Fresnel node. You can use Fresnel or you can use layer weight. I'm gonna use layer weight. You actually don't really need the shader to RGB in here, but you will if you actually wanna add it to one of your, like, you know, the cell shaded things or any of the other effects that I have shown, you can kind of add the outline just on top of it. So for that, you will need the shader to RGB, but for this, you can just plug a Fresnel into a greater than, and you're just gonna get this, uh, this effect right here. To invert this, instead of the greater than, you can use a less than if you want. Uh, and it's just gonna give you this black outline like that. And it is going to change depending on the shape of your object. So like I said, it's not, even width all the way around, but um, it's still a pretty cool effect. Facing should work just as well. It's a little different, but maybe uh, maybe it's a little more consistent for your model. So you might want to just play around with that. Both of these are basically just paying attention to like the viewing angle. But yeah, then you could add this on top just like I was showing before. So let's let's do that really quick. Okay, so we have the color ramp set up right here. 
and and you could do this a few ways you could multiply it you could um, mix it i'm just going to use a mixed color just because i think that's probably the easiest to understand you just want to put this into the first the outline into the second and then you can multiply it like that to get the dark outline or if you want, you can put this in the factor and then the outline is just gonna be whatever um, the second color is. If you have this set to mix, that is. So a few different ways of doing it. Oh, sorry. This would actually be in the second one because I forgot we were using a less than for this. But yeah, this would be the first color now in this case. So you could set this to whatever color you want. Okay, so we got the outline. The next is kind of like a watercolor or something like that. Just like painterly normals, um, that's the idea. I'll just call this, I'll call it painterly normals. Okay, so the whole idea behind this is we're gonna be cha uh, changing the normal right here, which is what's used to figure out like the, like the shading and the lighting. So if you set this to shade, shade flat, this is, this is showing the actual like normals of the faces right here. If you change this to shade smooth, it's basically blending all of those flat values together. So uh, what we can do is take, um, well, we have a few options for the normal that we actually use, but you can take the texture coordinate. You can use the normal from here, or you can use a geometry node and you can use the normal from here. And it'll make more sense, um, the difference between these when I actually show you the other method. We're gonna use a Voronoi texture and you just wanna plug this into the vector. And then instead of using the color, you want to plug the position into the normal right here. So immediately you can kind of tell what's going on. Uh, let's actually turn the metallic up a little bit and maybe let's turn the roughness down. When you have some reflections, it's a little easier to tell like what's going on. It's basically making, instead of it being smooth, it's making it so like, it's going to make it so it looks like it's a uh, shaded flat kind of, except it's going to be the same as this Voronoi pattern right here, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so the Voronoi, when you use it like this, the position, it's basically just pixelating the texture. So if instead we're using a window, so it's completely flat right here, window looks like this by default. It's just gonna show you the same, like it looks like a UV map basically, but if we use a position and turn the randomness down, it's basically just pixelating it. Um, and you would just change the pixel size with the scale right here. But then when we randomize it, it looks a little different. So that's why we're getting this effect right here. We're just pixelating the normals basically. And then you can do whatever you want with this. The main difference between the texture coordinate and the geometry, geometry coordinate is that when you rotate this one, you can see, um, you know, the, the texture is staying put. It's not really, uh, it's not really moving. But if you use the normal from the geometry, it will uh, change as you move it like that. So it just kind of depends on on what you actually want. But I think usually the texture coordinate one is the one that people are going to want to use. But you can also distort this a little bit. So if you want it to not be as like flat, but actually look more like paint swatches, you can use a noise texture right here. And there are a few ways of distorting with noise. Um, some people like to use a mix 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 rgb set to linear light i believe it works the same way but i'm used to using um geometry nodes so i always do it this way i'm going to use the object coordinate for that then we're going to use a vector math node set to subtract subtract 0.5 basically it's taking all of these values from the color that go from zero to one and it's making them go from making them go from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 so that the midpoint of all the values is zero and that just makes it so that when we distort it um, it's not pushing everything only in one direction and then we can set this to multiply or scale and now we just want to add it to this not that we want to um, add it to this vector right here like that and this will start to break it up and make it a little more random looking you can control the strength with strength with this uh, scale right here so let's just set it to something really low and then let's maybe make the scale a little lower, the detail a little higher, maybe like five. If you want it to get really um, grungy, you can turn the roughness up a little. Something like this, turn it down. I don't want it too splotchy. But anyway, you can get effects kind of like this. 
so it looks a little more painterly now. Obviously, if it's just very reflective, it doesn't really look like paint exactly. So you can use this in combination with all the methods that I was showing before. OK, so I think uh, if you just want it to look kind of like watercolor or something like that, like paint, um, then you can just use shader to RGB with the color ramp. But I think when you when you use the color ramp, I think it looks a little better when it's not set to constant and when you're just kind of crunching these a little closer. Or instead of using linear, you can use B spline. And basically, it's not going to be completely black where you put this stop right here. It's going to go a little past it. So you can still crunch the values closer, but it's a lot smoother looking. So you can get results like this. Let's just set this to be something like that. I think that looks pretty cool. Let's make another one at the end. Make it a little orange. This one will do completely white. OK, so you can get some uh, some cool results like this. They are going to have a hard edge. So if you want them to not have a hard edge, you can change the Voronoi right here. Instead of F1, change it to smooth F1. And then you have the smoothness meter right here like that. So I think just a little bit, like maybe halfway looks pretty good. And it will still interact with the light. So let's just take a look at this. Move it around. You can see that it will interact with the light, which is pretty cool. I think that's it. If you want this file, you can get it up on Patreon. That's where I put it. This will probably come out after the main channel video about the same topic. But if you sign up for Patreon, then you'll get it earlier. So, so yeah, do that, I guess. I don't know. Have a good one. That's it. Bye.